uh, we talked a little bit about streaming subscriptions. I'm going to just uh, do a little more of a kind of uh, uh, a little bit of an update on kind of where we are. Do a little bit of a live demo. We'll get to try it out a little bit um, and talk through kind of a few use cases uh, and our rationale also behind that. Right. So, um, in in general. Um, the need for kind of streaming data has been going up for all kinds of applications, right? Uh, the two two broad categories, right? The first is that you have increasingly we have a large amount of information, uh, which is fast that needs to be consumed within a short window of time, right? Like for example, you might have uh, you might go to a particular page and you want to see uh, logs, right? Like um, you have a build running and you want to see kind of build logs that have happened at that period of time, right? Or there's a ticker that's kind of moving and you're interested in that quote unquote real time information, right? Obviously, uh, uh, those kinds of events and changes are things that you want to stream and you're only interested in that stream within that window, right? When you're looking at it, but you need it to be a real time stream. Chat messages are another great example of like, you want to be able to see, and it's especially fast moving. So you want to be able to see that stream happen as you consume it, right? Um, but also uh, the same streaming kind of paradigm comes in um, even if that information that you're consuming is not necessarily fast moving, but it actually might be just a high, a large amount of data, right? And you need to kind of shift that large amount of data over an API, right? And um, these are kind of like data extraction kind of use cases or, uh, you know, in the good old days where you would just FTP it and, and hopefully not all of us have seen too many of those good old days, but, you know, maybe you copy a file over essentially, right? Or like this share, this gigantic, um, piece of data um, and then it becomes the easiest way to share the data is like chuck it in a file and then have folder sharing right but the api first alternative um, is is increasingly kind of becoming important right because you still want to have you want to have an http api you want to have a json api you want it to be secure um, so the a, a part of the challenge when it comes to streaming is that some of the underlying technology for persisting the streaming information exists, right? To persist the stream, that, that's fine, whether it's a database or a stream queue or whatever, um, that still exists. But a part of this API challenge is that it's hard to consume this information also, right? And that's kind of where graphical and subscriptions are a good fit. Um, but again, just to kind of recap why you have, you know, you want, you want things to be over HTTP um, because HTTP is nice. Um, security is figured out. Everybody in the entire ecosystem, the entire stack knows how to reason about security. They know they, everybody can reason about, HTTP can be stateless, which means that clients can connect and disconnect. And that's kind of built into um, the protocol itself. And of course, there's a tremendous amount of tooling through the entire stack, but especially on the edge side and on the client side, right? Um, streaming is also hard because a key part of consuming a stream is the ability to manage back pressure. In fact, one of the first reasons why when we when we launched uh, subscriptions and graphical subscriptions, we only did live queries is because the story around the back pressure is hard, right? You In a live query kind of model, it's easier to subscribe to an object as it changes um, because you know that you'll only get that, you'll get the latest value of that object. But suppose it's a stream of data. Um, you want to make sure that if you're consuming a stream and the stream contains a million events, um, your client can give feedback to the streaming producer, to the streaming server and say, hey, I've gotten way too many events and I'm dying because my you know, um, memory is overloaded or I, I can't fill up my data structures fast enough. Uh, and so please slow down or please pause, right? And this ability to manage back pressure is also really important. Otherwise you're just going to overload clients and kill them, right? Um, and then of course, part of kind of being stateless is also that you want to be able to recover from disconnects and not miss data, right? So these kinds of things are, things that make it challenging when we think about consuming a stream because these problems need to get solved, right? Um, and of course, uh, you want to make sure that when you're streaming, the, the system that is sending out the stream can also solve these same problems, right? The problems of being able to, um, all of those kind of primitives that the clients need to manage back pressure and to manage disconnect and stuff like that. But then also you want to make sure that you're able to handle your, like authorizations. So you're able to, at a stream, within the stream, subscribe to or stream only those parts that uh, you have authorization to be able to stream, right? Um, and you're able to enrich parts of that data, um, parts of that stream data that you can, uh, that you might might want additional information on. As an example, uh, with with one of our with one of our users and customers, we're kind of working on this use case where um, there's a mainframe that's generating credit card events um, and transactions, uh, and it's generating hundreds of millions of transaction events per day, and and that stream now needs to be published over an API to other people, 
So publishing and capturing that stream is a part of the task, which is fine. But then when we're delivering it over the API, when somebody is getting that credit card event, they might also want user.id, user.email, user.info, right? You want authorization to make sure that if I'm looking at a transaction and I'm the account manager uh, and that can actually view that transaction, I have the ability to access that, right? So it's that kind of same problem that we have with data, but now applied to an uh, entity inside streaming as well, right? And then of course, you want this whole system to scale out, right? Um, so when we kind of uh, think about introducing this capability in Hasura, right? What we did was we kind of reduced this, this problem in two dimensions. The first is GraphQL. I mean, using GraphQL as an API is nice because especially subscriptions is a nice API. It's web sockets. GraphQL is a convenient way to fetch stuff. You don't have to care about how it came to be. You have a GraphQL client and you're able to at least, uh, and then you, know, you have a GraphQL server. Um, it's over HTTP, it's over JSON. So, so some of the base plumbing starts to, starts to become clear, right? Um, but then the second step was that we reduced the streaming problem to, to a basic set of primitives. And for those of you familiar with us, most of us here on this call, um, that's kind of the approach that we always like taking, right? We always like reducing things to a basic set of primitives that are then composable, right? Uh, so in this case, the actual basic set of primitives, the task was to say that, hey, we want to solve some of those function problems that we discussed, and then we want to automate that part of that API creation problem for streaming, right? And so what we did was we said, um, because we want to keep composing our authorization and relationship stuff, um, what we reduced, we reduced this problem essentially to a range scan problem, right? So, um, we said that if we have a model and that model is essentially, let's say the stream model, then on top of that stream model, the streaming problem is essentially an efficient range scan and being able to pull incremental ranges of that data. That's what we're going to take a look at. Um, and now once we have that model, the stream model, all of the hustle of features around authorization relationships, et cetera, will just continue to work, right? Um, and the streaming primitive becomes incremental range scans that are as efficient as possible, right? Um, so we're going to talk about kind of how that works in a second, right? So, mm, uh, and and uh, and then from I, that that's the demo that I, that's the demo that I'll take you folks over. Um, a few notes on on the consumption side of the stream uh, as you think about using streams is that one. Uh, from just kind of an approach point of view, right? Any streaming, independent of Hasura, the way that you would think about consuming a stream is a consumer opens a connection, right? Um, this, uh, forget applications, backends, whatever, right? Any system that's consuming a stream, the stream consumer opens a connection, the stream consumer quotes their offset. So they say, hey, I want to start my stream from offset 12. And then from offset 12, you start getting the stream, right? And you get, an, you get ordered data from that offset. And the customer, the stream, the streaming customer, the streaming consumer, the API client, it commits or stores that offset so that in case something goes wrong, it's able to recover from that offset value. This is fundamentally any stream producer and stream consumer, right? This is this is the fundamental way that they would communicate. Important thing to notice here is that there is some amount of state, right? The 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 onus is on the client to store state about that about about where they're reading from. Notice that in the live query model for subscriptions, we didn't have to store any state, right? We just said, um, you just subscribe and you get the latest value, right? If it changes, you'll get changes, but you'll get, you'll get, I mean, you won't get the changes, you'll get the changed latest value, right? Um, and that way you don't have to store any state on the client, which is convenient for a lot of use cases, but doesn't work for cases that are just true streaming, right? Uh, where you do want to get a large streaming data or where you want to uh, pull in a large amount of data, right? Um, and so there is now a piece of state that has to be stored in the client. The client can actually store this again back on the backend system uh, and say, hey, here's my latest offset. So, you know, if I close the application and reopen it, I'm going to just fetch my latest offset from the backend first and then start reading from that offset, right? So, but it is now a problem that the customer does have to solve. So it introduces that element. But if you have that element, then the customer can start kind of consuming that stream. Um, we, you, you see the same idea everywhere. You see the same idea whether you're consuming from Kafka or Redis or directly at a backend service. You'll see the same idea of an incremental range scan uh, plus having offsets if you're using a system like Cassandra. Um, for example, Discord, uh, they, they had a really nice blog post. Uh, just my slide will have a link to it of how they built kind of their chat message system that would scale across threads with uh, Cassandra as an underlying system, right? For getting, uh, for being able to shard on that. Um, on a message ID or a message channel ID. But 
exactly the same idea of having an incremental range scan that is easy and fast to consume um, and, and this idea of, of having an offset. So, uh, so when we kind of now take all of this together, let's take a look at you know, what this looks like. So uh, what I've done here is, um, uh, and this is similar to demo that you might've seen earlier, but um, I, I have no idea why I chose this particular model. <laughs> <laughs> but here it is, it's colors. Um, and it's like color coded messages, essentially. So the color represents a channel. So there's a green channel and a red channel. And then, um, and then there's a message, right? Um, and so I set up an authorization rule saying that people who, um, people who belong to a red channel can only see, I'm gonna have something called a user ID, which is red. So if my user ID is red, I can only read from the red stream. If my user ID is green, I can only read from the green stream. Um, again, I don't know why I call this colors, but there you go. Um, and so, and this particular this particular model has, I think, I don't know, it has like about a million, about a million messages. And I'll, in this live demo, I'll be adding about 100K every instant or every second or so. Um, and then we'll stream that, right? So, um, so this is my model, right? Uh, normal model. I've also set up an authorization rule, which is that, um, which is based on this channel name or color name or whatever you have. Um, the important thing is that from a Hasura point of view, the job of how the data gets into this model is, is not what Hasura is solving. Somehow you have to make sure the data gets into this model. Once the data is in this model, Hasura will make sure that you get a streaming interface to that model. Right, that's the that's the approach that we're taking here. So, just to show you what the API looks like, um, what you would remember is our live query API, which was something like saying, "Hey, I have a color, uh, and that has an ID, and let's subscribe to um, message." Right, um, and if I go and change that message, this is just normal subscription, right? Where I'm looking at the live value. Uh, let's sort this by. ID in descending. Oh, oops, I added a bunch of data. Let me fetch this particular value here. All right, so ID equal to, right? And if I go change that to new message, right? Uh, you're subscribing to that latest entry, right? Um, but this is not particularly great if you wanted to subscribe to uh, there were messages that were happening on this channel, on this model, and you wanted to kind of stream these messages as they were coming in, right? That's that's what you want. Um, and this is not particularly great for doing that. Um, and in fact, that's that's kind of one of the top uh, one of the top kind of user requests that we've been looking at is basically saying if I if I want to model this kind of a system and I subscribe to this, the challenge becomes that if you start subscribing to the entire colors of the model, you're going to get a JSON response that contains a million elements. And so even if one element changes in the million, you're gonna get the full million again, which is not useful when you're looking at such a large list. It's useful when you're looking at a small element or one element that has a nested object and nested list, but it's not useful otherwise, right? So now what we're looking at is a streaming interface. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, so I can say subscribe to color stream and um, let's see what our latest ID here is. So we can get ID descending. All right, so I have this value here. So this is what the stream API look like. looks like. I can choose a batch size, um, which is the size of each payload, each WebSocket payload that I will get that contains this amount of data. Um, and then I choose kind of my initial offset value, right? So I choose the initial value of my offset that I want. So I'm gonna say it's this because that's the latest element that I have. I can also specify an ordering if I need to, but in this case, the ordering by default is just, um, okay, perfect. Um, and so let's start subscribing to this. And you'll see that it's kind of, there's nothing in here because this is the latest value. So there's no, the stream is active, but there's nothing kind of coming in here, right? What I'm gonna go do here is I have a load script, right? And I'm gonna load like, uh, I think I'm loading in like a hundred K rows uh, or, or something like that um, um, every half a second. So let's load that, right? Um, and so as soon as I do that, um, you'll see that this thing kind of starts streaming continuously, right? So it's, it's decoupled. The, the data has kind of gone in and that can go in at its own pace. And this stream is now kind of streaming from this um, with that initial cursor, right? So now if I stop this, right? 
as a client, let's say I stop this because maybe there's a back pressure problem or maybe I get disconnected. The next stream then should not continue from this value. The client has to store the latest offset, right? And then continue from this offset. Right? Let's bring my color here so that we're seeing some data, right? So this is kind of how, how this piece works. Um, it's fairly straightforward to integrate because it's just GraphQL subscription. It's super easy to integrate this on a app as well. You're seeing that I had this app running, which is why um, it's kind of starting to stream data also. So uh, if we can, we can try this out live if you folks want. So head over to this link. Um, and then randomly you'll be assigned a red channel or a green channel. And uh, if you type in things, you should see that here. So right now I'm on a green channel. So everybody on a green channel is going to see the message. Eggs are, eggs are green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham, there you go. <laughs> eggs and ham, right? Um, and now this is, this is now a stream, right? As opposed to, this is not like the live query model where we're getting the latest value and then doing a re-query or we're subscribing to the whole thing, right? Uh, hey, Cool. So um, this is kind of how you'd see that, right? And, and you'll notice that those folks who are on the red channel are only going to see red messages, right? Um, and if I spam you all by running a load, um, this, it'll, I'm not going to do that. Uh, a, a bunch of data will start flowing into your public feed, right? And if I refresh this, right, I'm just going to pick up from the latest. I'm just picking up from the latest offset. So I'm not seeing the older ones, right? This is just the way that the app is constructed. You can, if you want to, you can start incrementally streaming older stuff too. Right, so um, that's kind of how. Uh, so that's kind of what this piece looks like. Uh, uh, very, very excited about putting this together. We're putting a little more content about how uh, this works really well with uh, being able to scale this out massively by the cursor column that you have. You can use that as a shard key essentially, and if you use that as a shard key, you can start uh, horizontally scaling out as well. And the same pattern, the same pattern that we have here works across all types of data systems. Uh, that, uh, I mean, this is made on Postgres and you can do Citrus and Yugabyte and stuff like that right now. Um, and as we kind of expand to support other things from the Postgres family um, and other databases, the same pattern will continue to work, right? Um, so that is a quick look at streaming. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's all I had. I'm going to hand that off. <laughs> I'm going to back to you, Jesse. You're taking up a lot of time and I'll, I'll take questions on chat.